My next guest has held roundtable discussions all around the state with regional health care experts. Joining me now in the studio to reflect on what he's learned is the former chair and current ranking minority member of the Health and Human Services Committee, Senator Tony Laurie. Welcome. Uh, thank you. Thank you for having me. You've held 10 of these meetings statewide, which you've called, quote, productive, thought-provoking, and strikingly honest. Can you recap some of the common themes? Sure. So, so you've been reading my Twitter feed. I, yes. I'm new to tweeting, um, and it's You're been, doing great. but it's been it's been fun. And you know, getting out. One of the things that that inspired me to take, uh, undertake this tour is that, quite frankly, the political conversation has not been very productive and has sort of ignored the fact that we have a whole health healthcare delivery team on the street that actually needs to continue trying to provide health care and, and, and improve the health of our people in our communities. And we need to get out there and listen to them and actually engage in uh, um, an honest and uh, fact-based and civil dialogue about health care. And so I took it upon myself to start making calls and see if the health care delivery systems around the state um, were interested in that. And we got just really phenomenal response and really had the, the movers and shakers in each community I visited come forward. And there were some really common themes. I, I sort of asked a question that I've had at, at, as, a, as a presumption about where we need to go with health care for a very long time. And I felt it time to call that question and say, I've been trying to work toward, and, and many have, not just me, mm -hmm. but a coordinated delivery system that isn't just the clinical medical model that is our history, that is really a sick care system that waits for people to get sick and then tries to react. And that's a very expensive and not a very good way to promote health. We need a health care system that actually encompasses much more than that narrow clinical medical model. and and uh, embeds in it the social determinants of health and the, um, you know, you know, the behavioral health needs of the individual, the patient at the center of that team-based approach. And I just wanted to get out and see, you know, is that concept of care delivery reform taking root across Minnesota? And that is the theme, that it has. And it it's has. not something that so anybody statewide. is interested in. Statewide. Everybody is sort of on the same page that you're on. Yes. With approaching that. it in different ways and okay. unique ways in each and every community I visited they have you know they have unique challenges they have unique demographics they have unique solutions they have unique problems mm -hmm. um, in trying to accomplish this same end goal of a, of a better care delivery system and that's really one of the key uh, themes that came out is that that this is something that we want to support and and the the, the, the legislature is going to need to um, take note of that and and figure out how to respond in a way that actually does um, help support that care delivery redesign I mean our payment structure historically is a significant obstacle to that type of care design the incentives are all misaligned so that any actor in the healthcare system that steps forward and tries to produce health, they don't get paid for that work to produce health. And it also detracts from what they do get paid for, which is producing more volume. So they produce health, they reduce their volume, they don't get paid for the work that they did to create health, and they don't get the they don't get the volume of the things that they so do get paid for. So what you're pointing to is potentially a completely different way at looking at and paying for health care? Yes. We need to pay for value rather than volume. And and the payment reforms aren't the goal in and of themselves. Again, the care redesign is. And our care teams are really working hard. And so the, 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 the people that we invited to these roundtables were the hospital systems, the clinics, you know, the doctors, the, the mental health providers, the behavioral health providers, community health centers, federally qualified uh, health centers, FQHCs, um, the the counties, you know, the social service agencies, the county directors of human services and and uh, and, and health, um, the county commissioners. There are partners in our healthcare delivery system as well. So you know that's sort of the the team that we brought in. Um, sh you know, law enforcement. You know, sure. which has a real link to a lot of the you know mental health and chemical right. dependency well, issues that are also a significant burden. And challenge to our healthcare system, but one that that our healthcare system wants to respond to and and um, and, and 
improve outcomes. Well, so one of one of those things uh, that I wanted to ask you about was specifically mental health and chemical dependency, because you said to the Bemidji pioneer, Ely and Duluth have different ideas and structures based on resources and the demographics there. There's been a different community feel in each meeting. So communities may have the same problems, but they all mm -hmm. have, have potentially different ways of solving those problems. And so at the legislative level, how do you take into the individual needs of communities in terms of a statewide um, function of addressing it? Well, so the payment, the major payment reforms that we have undertaken in the state are through our public programs. That's really the market segment that the state uh, governs most directly. And it's the integrated health partnerships is a, is a big piece of that. And Duluth and you know, which has a big, uh, you know, a larger uh, medical system, healthcare system, Essentia is different than Ely that is, you know, part of it is aligned with Essentia, but it is much um, more sparsely populated, but they both have IHP models that are alive and well and operating in little different ways. Mm -hmm. Bemidji, as you mentioned, you know, there's a lot of their work centers around a, a grant program that we set up for a jail diversion um, uh, f for people experiencing, um, you know, mental health crisis or chemical dependency crisis, and a lot of the work is centered around there. They're, you know, um, uh, Ely is heavily utilizing um, community health workers. You know, Duluth's um, is reaching out to um, a lot of the. Uh, uh, the, the county support services that are available. Bemidji is, you know, well along the way to building a new right. uh, ERTS uh, intensive, um, IRTS, intensive rehabilitative treatment services. It's a step down from an inpatient setting. Um, there hasn't been a new ERTS in a very long time, but that's sort of one of the things that maybe we can do to help divert people from so are you um, thinking grants then for these individual programs is, is a way to go forward? Well, it's more, you know, it's more flexibility in the contracting models. Okay. So I mean, the IHP model, if you think about it broadly, if you have an attributed population you're trying to create health in, you know, what the IHP model is predicated on is setting a bench line, like without care delivery redesign, what is our cost trend? What are we? What would we be expecting over the uh, over a three-year contract period in terms of the cost trend? All right, that's our benchmark. You have an attributed population. This is the population that would increase at that level. We're going to give you some flexibility in how you provide the services. You can hire the community health worker. You can use a community paramedic. You can use other physician extenders. You can um, improve health in other ways. And if you're successful in, in bending that cost curve so that it's below the trajectory, you can share in those savings and help uh, pay for some of these traditionally non-medical clinical services. Before we have to go, if you are you getting some ideas in terms of what to bring to the legislature yeah. from, from these meetings? Yeah. These you know, if I had one takeaway one thing. Yes. that was consistent in mm -hmm. every single community, um, our uh, uh, Medical Records Act is really a barrier to a care team approach. And that has to do with privacy? That has to do with privacy. Okay. And so Minnesota is one of stu two states in the country that have stricter data privacy and uh, patient consent laws than HIPAA. And it really is a barrier to care teams mm -hmm. being able to apply a team-based approach. They're, you know, the 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 burden is so great um, and I think it's time that we really revisit that and try to take a more standardized approach. You know, the patient's still at the center, the patient consent and, and data privacy is still a very important issue that we need to take seriously, Absolutely. but I think patients really do want and, and, ha and, and um, value this, right. um, this design that is the um, coordinated approach. Senator Laurie, I want to thank you so much for your time today. Absolutely. It was fun to come in.